waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillar. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it, how is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Chapter 5, and verse number 1, And they came over to the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Skip down to verse number 21. Verse number 21, the Bible said, And when Jesus passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him. Much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things of many physicians that, had, that, uh, that she had had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I may, if I may touch but his clothes I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And as far as we'll read for the sake of time tonight, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God to bless his word. Our Father, God, as I bow before you this evening, I thank you, God, for the privilege. God, to be able to stand and break the bread of life. Lord, I thank you, God, for the, the preaching that we've already heard. God, I thank you for the good songs of Zion tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the good presence of the Holy Ghost. God, I thank you, Lord, most of all for Calvary tonight and the blood of Jesus, God, that was shed on an old rugged cross. God, to save a wretched sinner like me, God, and open up my access to the throne of grace. God, I thank you for that tonight. And I pray, God, that you'd help us. God, you know the needs of every heart. God, you know that that we stand in need of tonight. And I pray, God, that you'd help us. God, I pray you'd speak and move in our midst. And God, I pray, Father in heaven, Lord, God, I know that I'm nothing. God, and I can't do anything within myself. God, I sure do need your help. And I pray, God, that you'd fill me with the Holy Ghost. God, I pray, God, that you'd touch your servant. God, hide me behind the cross. God, clothe me in the cloak of thy calling. Father, I pray for unction tonight. God, help me to preach like a dying man to a dying people. Father, I pray, God, for that one nearest hell tonight. Lord, I pray tonight be the night. God, they'd see their self had killed and condemned before thee and they'd run to Calvary and get saved before it's too late. God, I pray, Lord, meet the need tonight. Touch hearts. God, do what only you can and we'll thank you for it and we'll give you all glory for it's in Jesus. Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you for standing. Mark chapter number four, Mark chapter number five, the text that we read and you hear in these, uh, this passage of scripture goes together. Of course, we understand and we're very familiar uh, for what's, what's taking place. Uh, and uh, no doubt we've heard these scriptures preached on many times. In Mark chapter number four, we read in you hearing about the storm. And then in Mark chapter number five, we uh, picked up how Jesus crossed over the other side and uh, come in, in contact with a maniac uh, that was possessed with demons, amen. And I want you to Notice, listen, if you look at this passage of Scripture, Mark chapter number 4 and all of Mark chapter number 5, many people refer uh, to this passage of Scripture as the land of impossibilities or the home of the hopeless. Uh, because every situation that we look at in this passage of Scripture is a hopeless situation or an impossible situation. In chapter 4, in verses 35 through 41, there is an impossible storm. Amen. Have these disciples had got in the ship and they were going to the other side. The Bible said that a great storm arose and the winds and the waves beat in the ship until it was now full. Now I don't know much but I do know this. When a ship gets full of water, it's going down. Amen. And friend, here these disciples were. They were in a great storm. That was too much for them. And the ship was full of water. There was no way that they could fix their situation. There was no way they could stop the wind from blowing. 
one. There was no way they could get the water out of the shield fast enough. It was an impossible storm, amen? And then you come to chapter number five, and there's a man, there's a wild man possessed with demons. And the Bible said, listen, he'd been often bound with chains and fetters, and he'd have plucked them asunder. And the Bible said, neither could any man tame him. You know, that tells me they tried to tame him. They tried to fix him. They tried to get him to turn over a new leaf. They tried to get him to straighten up and go a different way. I but listen, no man, no individual could help him. Nobody could get him on the right path. Nobody could get him to change his life. Nobody could get him out of the graveyard. Nobody could get him out of the tomb. He is an impossible sinner. Amen. Nobody can fix this sinner. Nobody can fix this maniac. He is an impossible sinner. But in the middle part of the text, there's a woman that's got an issue of blood. And the Bible said she's had it for 12 years. And nothing grew better, but rather grew worse. As she's been to every physician she knows to go to. As she's tried every remedy she knows to try. And friend, listen, all she's found out how that there's no hope for her sickness. How nobody has a cure. How nobody has an answer. Amen. How it is an impossible sickness. As she's tried to find a cure, but nobody can help her. And so we see an impossible sickness. And in the latter part of chapter five, Jairus has got a daughter that lies to the point of death. And he goes to go give the Lord Jesus and to bring him back to his home. And while he's gone, his daughter draws her last breath and she dies, amen. That is an impossible situation. Amen. My friend, I don't know much, but I know when death comes knocking, there's nothing that you and I can do about it. We have no power over death. We have no power over sickness. We have no power over sinners. And we have no power over storms tonight. These are impossible, hopeless situations that we find in this text. Amen. But I want to say tonight, we can talk about the storm and we can talk about the sinner and the sickness and the situation, but I want to submit to you tonight, friend, this text. It's really not about the storm. It's really not about the sinner. It's really not about the woman. And it's really not about the child. But I'll tell you, it's about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he was able to do in the midst of a hopeless and a helpless situation. Amen. My friend, you'll find in these texts, if you study the Gospels, you'll find these four types of miracles that Jesus performed in in the Gospels, you'll find that how he ruled nature, amen? And then you'll find he removed demons, he restored health, and he raised the dead. You'll find those four types of miracles out throughout his ministry if you study the Gospels. You know what we'll, we'll find in this text? is all four of those types of miracles he performed here in this passage, amen? He ruled nature in the storm. Hey, he removed the demons in the sinner. He restored the health of the sick lady. And he raised the dead of the, uh, uh, listen, of the small child. I'm telling you, thank God. Uh, listen, when the world says there is no hope, uh, and when everybody says it's impossible, I'm glad, thank God, there's a God in heaven. I'm still able, thank God. I'm glad, listen, when man says there's no hope, uh, and when man says it's impossible, I'm glad, thank God, the same Jesus has uh, stepped out on the scene in the midst of these situations. I can still do what he's always done. Amen. I want to show you some things about the Lord Jesus Christ in this text and I give you a few things I, listen, I think it's interesting if you study this you'll find that Jesus touches, he touches a man he touches a woman and he touches a child Amen. Now listen, it does not matter, man, woman, boy, or girl. He is the answer for what, what your need tonight. Amen. I'm telling you, thank God, listen, he conquers man's greatest fears in this text. And there's a lot we could say about the individuals. But I want to focus on the Lord Jesus and preach on the sympathetic Savior out of this text tonight. Amen. I want to show you a few things about the Lord and I'll be done. I won't preach long tonight. But I want you to notice we'll find in these four miracles what we'll find about Jesus and every one of them, how you can find some similarities in how he dealt with every situation and in every circumstance. I'm gonna say, listen, all of them were different, but yet he dealt with them similar, amen? I'm gonna say, first of all, we'll find in these four miracles that Jesus was available. 
Amen, friend. I think it's interesting. Uh, listen, it does not matter uh, whether he was the disciples uh, or whether he was the maniac. Uh, uh, Jesus was always there. Amen. He was available. Here these disciples were in chapter 4. They were on a ship and a great storm arose and the Bible said uh, that he was asleep in the hinder part of the ship. Amen, friend. And the Bible said, listen, that they ran and said, carry us down not that we perish. Uh, can I say tonight, he may have been asleep in the hinder part, but they knew where he was, amen, to go get him when they needed help. He was there, he was available, how to be approached, amen. In chapter five, listen, there's a maniac. He's up in the tombs cutting himself. How nobody could do anything with He's minding his own business. He's not looking for God, amen, friend. I'm telling you, he's not at a camp meeting. He's not looking for God. He's not looking for help. I listen, he's up there cutting himself. I but thank God Jesus come to where, comes to where he is and passes by his way on purpose. I listen with I have to make himself available for the maniac to get help. I listen, here's a woman has got an issue of blood for 12 years and just so happens she's weak and she's feeble and just so happens Jesus passes by right where she is. It just so happens, my uh, friend, he knows uh, uh, he took the path right by her. He knew exactly where she'd be at. And he walked right by her on purpose. Uh, how to make himself available unto her. How can I say tonight, thank God he is available unto all them that'll call upon him. Uh, there's an open invitation in the Bible. Hey, listen, you know what you'll find? Uh, everybody in this text, uh, uh, they approached him, Amen. They came to him. I say, why did they come to him? Because he is available. <laughs> Amen. How the Bible said about the woman when the issue of blood said when she heard of Jesus. Now, I don't know what she had heard, but she had heard enough to know how that he was right for whatever was wrong in her life. Amen. Uh, maybe she had heard about. Uh, listen, she, you listen. Uh, she's an outcast of society. Uh, she's unclean. And she, listen, she's had to be cast aside. And uh, maybe she had heard about in Luke, in Mark chapter number one, where Jesus touched that leper and he come to the Lord and said, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus said, I will. And he touched him. Amen. Uh, maybe she had heard about that. I don't know. Maybe she had heard about the man with the withered hand. Maybe she had heard about the one born of four. Uh, Maybe she'd heard about the maniac. How but she'd heard enough to know how that he was right for whatever's wrong, wrong in her life. How can I say tonight? Listen, I've not been this thing long, but I know enough to know that he is right for whatever's wrong in your life. And he is available how to meet your need. Amen. 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 Hey, listen, he is available. How the Bible said, come now, let's reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be right as stone. How the Bible said, come unto me, all ye labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's an open invitation. How to come unto him. Thank God, listen, he has made himself available. Amen. Amen, friend. Well, I'm telling you what, you, you, you can study the whole Bible and you'll find that God is constantly making himself available for man. Amen. I mean, when Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, he partook of that forbidden fruit and fell into sin. The Bible God said that God came walking in the cool of the day. You know what he was doing? He was making himself available. I'm the habit. I'm telling you, God, I listen, it's available for you tonight. It does not matter what you're going through. It does not matter where you're at. It does not matter what's going on in your life. I thank God he is available. You can find help at the feet of Jesus. I'm because he is available tonight. Amen. Amen. I say he's available, but I want you to know this. I want you to know something else we find in this text. He's able. Amen. I said, no, is he available, but he's able tonight. Amen. Hi, friend, listen, you'll find here in this text that, that he, listen, he calmed the storm. He converted the sinner. He cured the sickness. And he changed the situation, amen. How can I say tonight, friend, he's still able to calm the storm, amen. 
Hey man, listen, them disciples said, what manner of man is this? How did even the wind and the sea obey him? I'm telling you, thank God, he's still able to speak peace. He's still able to calm the storm. He's still able to calm the winds. Hey friend, he's able to calm the storm, amen. You know what I found out? Hey, listen, I found out he won't always calm the winds around you, hey, but he'll calm you in the middle of the storm. Yeah. Amen. I tell you, I remember years ago, my wife and I went through a storm. And I, listen, we were going through some things and she was having some physical trouble. And man, I got on my face, started begging God to, how to intervene and how to take the sickness away and how to cure and do a work. And I'm telling you, listen, friend, God did not take it all away. Amen. She still had to have surgery and she still had to have some treatments and different things of that nature. Listen, and there still was some suffering. I tell you what, on my face, I listen, God, the Holy Ghost of God, I spoke to my heart and said, I'm a very present help in time of trouble. I did not know what was going to happen down the road. I didn't know what was going to come up. I but thank God I knew that he was going to be a very present help in the time of trouble. He's still able to calm the storm tonight. No, he's still able to calm the storm, but he's still able to convert the sinner. Amen. Oh, yes, thank God. Hey, listen, here's a wild man that nobody could do anything with. You know what they probably said about him? They probably said there's no hope for him. Amen. How they've tried, they've bound him, how they've done everything they could do, no doubt. They said there's no hope for him. Amen, I was thinking about why they're singing a little while ago. Hey, listen, I was not raised in the old time way. I was not raised in this environment. I mean, I'm telling you, you know what they said about me? They said, there's no hope. He'll never straighten up. He'll never change. Hey, listen, he'll never be any better. They'll find him in a ditch somewhere. I friend with his back broke. I but thank God, I'm glad God had come by where I was and brought me out of the home of pit and out of the Mary Clay and changed my life. I'm telling you, he He's still able, he's still able, he's still able to save sinners tonight. Amen. He's able to convert the sinner tonight. But I'm gonna say he's still able to cure the sickness, amen. Oh yes, friend. Here's a woman that's got an issue of blood for 12 years. And the Bible said nothing grew better, but rather grew worse. And listen, I was looking at that one time. And the Bible said that many thronged him. Amen, but she touched him. Say, what was the difference? Amen. That throng, I was looking at that throng, and it's up here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. They're thronging him, yeah. but she's down here to see him. Go ahead. Oh, yes, friend. There's a lot of people yeah. wanting help, and they're up here they're trying to throng him and trying to get help. But when that woman got down there at the him, he done what no man can do. He done what no doctor can do. He's still able how to cure the sickness tonight. Amen. He's still able to change the situation, amen. I gotta hurry, he's available tonight. He's available tonight, friend. Boy, aren't you glad he's available? I'm glad, thank God, listen, I'm glad he's available. I'm glad, thank God, there's an open invitation anytime. I'm glad he's available tonight. I'm glad he's able, amen. Bible says he's able to do all things above and exceedingly that we can even think or ask. I'm telling you, listen, the same God that parted the Red Sea, had the same God that stood, had the Jordan up on the heap, had the same God that caused the walls of Jericho to fall, had the same God that told the sun to stand still, had the same God that turned, had the lion out on Calvary. That's the same God I'm a servant tonight, and he's still able to do the things that he's always done. Amen. He's available. He knows his ability, his availability. Now he knows his authority. His authority tonight, amen. You know what you'll find in this text? You'll find that the Lord conquers man's greatest fears. Amen. Hey, listen, everything that you and I fear, our greatest fears in this life, he deals with in this text. Say, what do you mean? Well, uh, he conquers disaster in chapter four. Amen. A natural disaster it hit. And uh, listen, he steps on the scene and uh, speaks peace in the midst of a disaster. And then he, listen, he deals with disaster and then he deals with demons. And then he deals with disease. And then he deals with death. 
Amen. So that's the four things. How that we fear in this life. How the disaster that we cannot do anything about. How the devil that we're no match for on our own. How disease that we have no control over. And death that's always a stranger when it comes knocking. How but thank God I'm glad he's got the authority to speak peace and the power over death and the power over demons and the power over disaster and the power over disease. He has authority tonight. Amen. Amen. You know what you'll find in this text? Listen, with the power of his word, all of these things obeyed him. Amen. I said, he, listen, he spoke the, to the wind, and they said, what manner is man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him, amen. All he did was spoke the word. I said, he just spoke the word, and the, there was a great calm, amen. Then chapter five, chapter five, in verse number one, that demon, that maniac come to him full of demons, and they cried out and said, ah, listen, have mercy on the, and the Lord spoke, and gave them leave, and when he spoke, the demons come out of that man, and thank God, listen, they had to submit to his authority, amen. Thank God the demons have submitted to the word of God. Amen. This time. Amen. Then we find the woman. Amen. Say she touched his garment. She was whole, but she's got to read on. And Jesus stopped and dealt with her. If you study the Bible, how she, her, her bleeding, her disease stopped. But according to the Bible, she was still unclean. She was going to be unclean for seven days and she had to go out of the temple and offer a sacrifice for her purifying before she'd be considered clean again. Hey man, friend, I tell you what Jesus did. He said, thy faith that made thee whole. I'd go and listen, go and sin no more. I, when he spoke the word, he cleansed her. I, friend, she didn't have to go to the temple. I, she didn't have to wait seven days. I, but at his word immediately, I, he overcame her sickness. Amen. Amen. His authority, then death. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He goes in there, in there, that little girl's room, and he said, I say in thee, arise. Damn, so I say in thee, arise. Hey, and listen, you know what? She had to obey him. I said she had to obey his word. She had to obey his voice. Death had no control, no power over her. I thank God, listen, death has no power when it comes to him. He has authority over death. He has authority over disease. He has authority over the devil. And he's got authority over disaster tonight. Amen. I'm about done. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want you to notice this. I want you to notice his affection tonight. Notice his affection tonight. I said, what do you mean, preacher? Now, if you look at these, the, all, all of these, really, if you look at them, all of them approached him, but in reality, all of them did not approach him the right way. Amen. So what do you mean, preacher? Well, here these disciples are in a storm, and the Lord's asleep in the hinder part of the pit, and they, they ran to him and said, Lord, carest thou not that we perish? I tell you what they didn't do. They didn't come before him and say, Lord, how we're in a bad shape. How God we're in need help. How we're in a bad storm. And how, oh no, friend, but they rebuked him for being asleep. Amen. They said, Carry us down, not that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind. You know why? I think, listen, he got up and he understood that they were afraid. He understood that they were fearful. And in his compassion and in his mercy, he looked over their fear. He looked over their lack of faith. And he done, thank God, in spite of themselves, in spite of them, in spite of how they were approaching, in spite of their prayers. Listen, he loved them. He understood where they were at. He knew what what they were going to. And thank God he spoke the words in spite of them. Amen. And then chapter five, there's a maniac here. And the Bible said in verse six, chapter five, and when he saw Jesus far off, he ran to worship him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God. He said, what have I, what have I to do with thee? Amen. He didn't say, oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He didn't say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Hi, friend, listen, he prayed the only way he knew how to pray. He cried out the only way he knew how to cry out. And Jesus, thank God, in his love and his compassion and his mercy, I listen, look past his ignorance and answered his prayer and cast the demons out and saved him by the grace of God. And I just say this, I'm glad sometimes God will look past my ignorance and love me anyhow and listen, move 
in anyhow and answer my prayers in spite of myself, in spite of my ignorance, amen. Oh yes, friend. Then we have this woman with the issue of blood. She touched him. Now she's not supposed to do that. Because anybody she touches is considered unclean. Amen. Uh, listen, she has no right to touch him. In reality, uh, she, if she listen, she's not really even supposed to be doing what she's doing. And I'll tell you what, she's at the bottom. She's at the end of herself. And she's tried everything she knows to try. She's done everything she knows to do. How she's prayed every prayer she knows to pray. She's been to every doctor she knows to go to. And thank God all she knows to do is reach out by faith and grab a hold of him. And listen, the Bible said she touched the hem of his garment and was made whole. I'm telling you what, listen, Jesus in his compassion and in his mercy looked over her ignorance and blessed her in spite out of herself, amen. Can I be honest with you tonight? I don't, listen, and some of you have to admit the same thing. I do not handle every situation right. Amen. I listen, I read over there in Job and I don't, listen, Job went through all that he went through. And the Bible said that he fell down and worshiped. Can I just be honest? How when things happen in my life, I don't fall down and worship all the time. Some of y'all don't look at me like that, Amen. Hey, listen, I, 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 sometimes I don't react with worship. I react with fear. Sometimes I react with anger. Amen, friend. I said, Lord, why, how, what else can go wrong? Why is this happening to me? And I, but I'm telling you, thank God, I'm glad in those times when I don't react the right way, how the way that I should, I'm glad God will sit down beside of me and put his arms on me and love me in spite of myself, in spite of my fears, in spite of my failures. I'm glad God still loves me. Do you realize that, I, friend, there's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you anymore. How about God loves us? with a perfect love. And listen, he loves us in spite of ourselves tonight. Amen. Amen. Her, his affection tonight. I'll tell you what he did. He handled all of them with compassion. Well, I'm glad he's compassionate tonight. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, he loves me. I'm glad, listen, I'm not lovable. And listen, I'm not what I ought to be, but thank all the time, and I sure am glad. I thank God that he loves me in spite of myself. I'm glad he cares for me in spite of myself. I'm glad he speaks to me in spite of myself. I'm glad when I don't even know what I need, I'm glad he pulls up beside of me and give me, gives me exactly what I need for him. He is a sympathetic Savior tonight, amen. And I'm gonna tell you, listen, it does hey, listen, it don't matter where you're at in life. It don't matter what's going on in your life tonight, friend. Hey, listen, he's right for whatever's wrong in your life. If you're here and you're not saved, he can save you tonight. If you're here and you get right with God, he listen, you can come back and get right tonight. If you're here, listen, you're just hurting on the inside, he'll pour a little oil in your wounds. I'm telling you, hey, if you approach him, he's right for whatever's wrong in your life. Amen. He is a sympathetic Savior tonight. And he'll help you tonight if you'll come to him. Amen, preacher. That's all. Amen. 